It has been the custom at the state conventions, and uh, those of you who might be new to the Master Gardener program, on even numbered years, the Missouri Master Gardener Association sponsors what usually is a multi-day program, like Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday morning. Then the following odd number years, uh, University of Missouri Extension, headed up by those of us who are associated with the Master Gardener program, sponsors what we call a mini convention. And it was maybe uh, just a bit of luck or foresight that we decided last January to do this virtually, not knowing what this Delta variant of the COVID virus might be up to on September the 25th. So the state of the state, the data that I'm going to present is for last year. And it will be next year that we give the state of the state for 2021. The Missouri Master Gardener Program is one of the most widely distributed <laughs> University of Missouri Extension programs in the state. You're familiar with the uh, I'm having trouble advancing. Let's do it this way. If you're familiar with the uh, extension service, it has divided Missouri into a number of regions, including two urban regions. What are there, 114 counties, and then the city of St. Louis. And in nearly every county, we have a master gardener coordinator, and in many counties, a master gardener program. So indeed, it really is one of the most widely distributed extension programs, University of Missouri Extension in the state of Missouri. And has been, uh, I guess, somewhat progressed. For many Missourians, the master gardener program is the face in voice of the University of Missouri Extension for the local communities. Now, hopefully there are other programs as well, but nonetheless, the Master Gardener program appears to be, and I'll use the term, the anchor program for extension throughout most of the counties of Missouri. Well, we can probably use the term, I don't know, was it Winston Churchill or Roosevelt, a year that will live in infamy, talking about uh, World War II beginning, that 2020 will be a year that for future generations they're going to be talking about. If 2020 taught us anything, it should have been that things don't always go as planned. What began for Extension Master Gardeners as a normal year with great plans, programs scheduled, training classes set to go, all changed overnight. Classes were canceled, meetings were postponed, and if you will, the world was put on a temporary hold, all because of a minute organism that cannot even be seen with a light microscope. But somehow in the midst of this COVID pandemic, master gardeners prevailed. We all know that the director of extension for the safety of all involved suspended all extension activities. I think it was in March of 2020 and we did not resume them until late May of 2020, and then with some uh, regulations as far as uh, numbers of people, masking, and so forth. 
Well, Master Gardener Zoomed, emailed, masked up, socially distanced, and did whatever it took to keep some semblance of the motto, helping others learn to grow alive and well. So in spite of the pandemic, Master Gardeners were able to accomplish much and make a very important impact on those that they served. So while the numbers for 2020 might not be quite what they would have been without COVID, they still were very impressive in spite of COVID. And indeed, after the restrictions by extension were lifted, this is the way that many master gardeners had to pursue their passion of gardening and helping others learn to garden, mask, distance, and so forth. That said, by the numbers for 2020, we had a grand total of 70,817 volunteer service hours. And yes, that is down from 2019, but during the peak of what had been volunteer service time, spring of the year, we were put on hold. It's called the Independent Sector Organization. And they put a value on the dollar value of donated service. For 2020, that value, a dollar value was $28. And 54 cents. So if you do the math, we almost $2 million in value donated to Missourians in spite of being shut down for nearly three months and being greatly restricted thereafter. So that is an accomplishment that to me is nothing short of amazing and for which you as master gardeners should feel a great deal of pride in. A few more numbers, and again, this is 2020. There are 2,957 master gardeners active plus 455 emeriti on the MU master gardener list serve. I think many of us are aware that St. Louis has their own program, even though they are part of the University of Missouri Master Gardener program. On their listserv, they have about 100, uh, 750 Master Gardeners for a roundabout total of, let's just say, 4,000 master gardeners in the state of Missouri. Now, by virtue, any organization that relies on volunteerism is going to have to replenish the ranks on a very continual basis. And such is the case with the master gardener program as we try to continually have others join in this helping others learn to grow mission. That said, it was back in 2013 that we initiated online master gardener training, not as a replacement for what we'll call in-person training, but for an alternative for those folks who found in-person to be logistically impossible or inconvenient with regard to their schedule. Give you some numbers. And by the way, we just passed last winter the 1,000th person having gone through online Master Gardener training. Do you think the suspension in, in activities by extension had anything to do with these statistics. Winter online, we had 56, but there were planned in person that unfortunately 
had to be suspended. Fall, 176. And just peeking ahead to this year right now, and our class started August 18th, we have 191 people registered, followed by last winter where we had 189. I mention this because online training is becoming very popular, but we need current active master gardeners to try to integrate into their local chapters these online trainees. The names and contact information for online trainees have been shared with local master gardener coordinators. The name and contact information for local master gardener coordinators has been shared with our online trainees. So we want to get the two together as soon as possible to make them feel a part of the local program. And anything that you as an active master gardener can do to help would be greatly appreciated. Uh, acting as a mentor, just taking someone from your area who is enrolled online, perhaps emailing them now and then asking how things are going, inviting online trainees to local chapter meetings or social events would be a great idea as far as making these folks who do their training online to feel a part of the local chapter. That said, a few other things that were uh, will mark as improvements for 2020. There was a major facelift in many of the university extension websites, including that of the master gardeners. Here you see a screenshot. This is the master gardener website that is housed on the University of Missouri server. I'm going to point to a search box outlined in red. And the neat thing about this is that you type in any subject in that search box, and let's say pruning roses, and you hit search and up will come all of the publications that we at MU have available on pruning roses. The university has abandoned printing these in favor of just making them available digitally and in printer friendly form if you want to download a copy for yourself. Going down a bit further, we have made it a little bit easier that once you're on the Master Gardener University webpage, you find out news about yard and gardening, where this is also available on a separate website. And you can see home horticulture, diseases and pests, and the Missouri Environment and Garden is a monthly newsletter that is put out by, and Tamara talked about the Integrated Pest Management Program, put on out, sponsored by IPM. If you're, it's free, you can digitally register and receive notification of when another article has been posted or so forth. Want to point out below here the red arrow that we also have put in a very conspicuous place a jump off to the Missouri Master Gardener Association website, which for the rest of this presentation we're going to refer to as MAMGA, Missouri Master Gardener Association a very excellent website, frankly designed by the same person who designed our reporting website, but has a host of information about local chapters, events going on sponsored by local chapters, so forth. 
So this, at least in my mind, has been a big improvement. Uh, going up on the left-hand side, uh, thanks to field specialist in horticulture, Robert Bailick, we now have a much more prevalent footprint in, we'll call it social media, and the Master Gardener, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account are all, all the ways by which you can access information, perhaps share information with others, or so forth. And if you do go around on the internet and look at other websites, uh, I would have to challenge a state to better the one that we have. There might be equal, but on the other hand, this is a very user-friendly, informative website. Well, want to review just briefly those emphasis areas that we had hoped to do a bit more work in in 2020 and are doing work in in 2021. And it fits so nicely into Donna's presentation. Youth gardening programs are very high on our list of priorities. And again, we mentioned garden and grow, eating from a garden, uh, there might be local schools who have their own programs who would love to have volunteers to help out. But referring to that statistic, the youth are 25% of our present, but 100% of our future is reason enough to pursue youth gardening as one of our priorities. Home food production. I've forgotten the statistic, but I think it's one in every 12 or one in every seven people are food insecure. And this is not necessarily just in uh, large metropolitan areas. So teaching people how to grow their own food for the sake of enhancing their Nutritional intake for the sake of saving money, for the sake of the exercise involved, for the sake of all of those things that have been proven as a benefit of growing your own food, home food production remains one of our top priorities. And indeed, if your chapters do demonstration gardens, uh, home vegetable production seminars or workshops. That's exactly what we have hoped to hear under this emphasis area. Tamara talked quite a bit about insect uh, ecology and environmental stewardship. Uh, we wanna take that one step or two or three steps further and anything we can do to leave the world a better place than we found it would to me be environmental stewardship. Don't know how many of you have heard of the extension program, Healthy Yards for Clear Streams. Well, this is just an attempt to try to keep from polluting our rivers, ponds, lakes, and so forth with runoff that might be a byproduct of gardening or at least of society. Here you see a volunteer, I'm sorry, a chapter demonstration gardening. And anything that we can do with regard to this type of demonstration garden programming for the public or so forth fits nicely into this environmental stewardship. The last is a rather nebulous one to try to describe, adding value to created landscapes. 
This simply is trying to impress upon people the importance of aesthetics in their lives. Uh, if you want a statistics, it's found that a well landscaped home can sell for as much as 15 or 20% more than a poorly landscaped home. So yes, we do add value as we beautify our home grounds and gardens. But more important, we add to that elusive, well, what is the daily minimum requirement for aesthetic virtue in our lives? That has not been answered, but that is something that we in horticulture strive to make a reality. Someone once said that agriculture made life possible or sustains life. Horticulture makes it worthwhile. And indeed, demonstration gardens dealing with different species that might also be environmentally friendly or so forth, all fits underneath this added value to created landscapes. Uh, I'm not talking about it today, but you know there is now a new version of the reporting website online, and it will cause you to put into these categories the hours that you donate along with the audience and so forth. This is still a work in progress. We had another training session with our webmaster just earlier this week, but the hope is that with this new and improved reporting website, we can better document the impact, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Master Gardener program on the state of Missouri, not just the hours, not just the monetary value, but this was the impact made in food production value to a landscape or so forth. That said, the Missouri Master Gardener Association sponsors each year awards of excellence. The Master Gardener State Office essentially funds them. Chapters announce, I'm sorry, nominate individuals on the MOMGA website. Those applications are sent to me and I find individuals who have no connection at all with that chapter or any other chapter that applied for the same award to judge these. And then the, the winners have a nice plaque made and in this case, it's going to be sent to their local coordinator, which hopefully will have some sort of maybe at the next chapter meeting, a little presentation ceremony where pictures can be taken that can be posted on the MOMGA website. Well, there are three categories for the awards. And the first would be the chapter of the year. There are four categories in size, small, medium, medium, large, and large. And unfortunately, we didn't have an entry in all size classes in all categories. But here we go for chapter of the year. The small chapter award goes to the Christian County Master Gardeners. Well done. The medium chapter goes, I think I'm correct in saying the second year in a row, to the Ozark Prairie Master Gardeners, which if you're not familiar with their location, is uh, located near Morgan County, Versailles, Missouri, or so forth. The medium large chapter winner would be the Franklin County Master Gardeners. So congratulations to these three chapters.
for being selected by an impartial panel as the chapter of the year for their size classification. The second award is the project of the year. There was no application for the small and that might have been due somewhat to the pandemic, but the medium chapter went to the Ozark Prairie Master Gardeners for their project sponsoring the yard of the month. And if I recall, I think that was in the city of Versailles, Missouri, yard of the month. For the medium large Franklin County Master Gardeners in the Union City Hall native planting was judged to be the best project submitted by medium large size chapters. We had no one who was small to submit or no one large submit. And I know that there were especially in the large category, a lot of very, very useful and worthwhile projects, but uh, we'll just have to work on getting folks to apply next year. The final category is Master Gardener of the Year. And for the small chapter, the award goes to Beth Platt of the Christian County Master Gardeners. The individual who nominated Beth said she is a go-getter who seems to never run out of energy. I'm envious, especially when it comes to the Christian County Master Gardeners. And she noted her many accomplishments on the nomination and added, Beth does all of these things with a twinkle in her eye, uh, accompanied usually by a hearty chuckle. So congratulations, Beth, for being selected as the Master Gardener of the Year, small chapter. Medium chapter, the award goes to Mary Ella Zimmerman, again of the Ozark Prairie Master Gardeners. Said of Mary Ellen, as a Master Gardener, she shares her love for gardening in meeting people by working with the students of the Versailles VOAG program, teaching core classes, and interfacing especially with the Mennonite community, which is fairly large in that area of uh, the state at large. So again, congratulations to Mary Ella, who was selected to receive Master Gardener of the Year for the medium chapter. For the large chapter, and we had no nominations for the medium large. The large chapter Master Gardener of the Year is Karen Kunz of the Master Gardener of Greater Kansas City. Said of Karen by the person who nominated her, she is a recognized leader who provides guidance and direction to the members of the Master Gardener of Greater Kansas City Chapter, Advisory Board and others, as well as to the Extension Chapter Coordinator and Horticulture Instructor. Karen, congratulations on being selected as Master Gardener of the Year, Large Chapter. Again, I say the plaques will be sent to your local coordinator, and we would hope that there would be some sort of a presentation ceremony at which pictures can be taken so that we can send them to MOMGA to put on the website. Uh, just a final thought. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. That was said by Winston Churchill. And I think that is a motto that most master gardeners live by in that giving of themselves to others, be it helping children learn to garden, growing food for the less fortunate or so forth, would be indicative of we make a life by what we give. 
If I can steal just two minutes of our next speaker's time, I would like to, first of all, thank everyone for sharing their passion, care, and wisdom of the garden with all Missourians. Keep up the good work. And then secondly, if you're looking for something interesting, that's not it to do. That's it. The 2nd of October, from 10 until 3, it's called the HARC, Horticulture Agroforestry Research Center, located in the big city of New Franklin, Missouri, which is just across the river from Boonville. There is an annual chestnut roast festival. Uh, there are speakers, there is entertainment, and yes, there is chest, there are chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Hopefully no Jack Frost nipping on our nose yet, but nonetheless, it, it is a very enjoyable uh, mid-morning to early afternoon, if you can make it. <clears throat> Again, you could just Google HARC, H-A-R-C, and up would come their homepage, and there would be maps and so forth. Nice way to spend what hopefully will be a very pleasant fall afternoon on the first Saturday of October.